What's good, everybody? Professor Peters here today. In my video today, guys, we're going to do a very quick review on functions, what the graph should look like, and how exactly to find the zeros for a function. So as we start off, guys, when we're trying to find a zero, guys, all we're doing is basically solving for the variable. So we're going to replace f of x with zero, and we are just going to solve like a regular equation. So once we do that, right, we'll have 8 is equal to 4x, or if you like your variables the other way around, right, 4x is equal to 8. Once we divide by 4, we know x is equal to 2, right? So what exactly does this mean? This is an intercept, okay? This is an intercept. We know that when, when we look at the graph, it's going to cross the x-axis when x is 2, okay? And just remember, guys, since there is no exponent, this is a linear function, meaning on the graph, it's going to be a straight line. All right, let's go over to the second one. So in our second problem, right, they give us, and let's switch colors. They give us f of x is equal to x squared minus 3x minus 28. So guys, same rules apply. Only difference now from this problem to the second is our exponent. But we're going to do the same exact thing. So we have x squared minus 3x minus 28 is equal to zero. I just went ahead, put my zero at the end. And when we're solving now, we're not going to solve it like a linear equation. We have to factor it, right? So that means we're looking for two factors that when we multiply, it gives us what? Negative 28. And when we add, it gives us negative three. And our students get this wrong because they forget to set their factors to zero. So we're going to have x minus, and let's make sure this is right real quick. I think I have my sign wrong. Oh, no, that's right. We have x minus 7, right, and x plus 4. So when we multiply, we'll get negative 28, and when we add, we'll get negative 3. Every student will get to this point, but guys, don't forget this very key point. It's set equal to zero, so we have to put x minus 7 is equal to zero. And once we solve, we know that we're going to have an intercept, right? This line is going to cross the x-axis when x is equal to 7. And then when we go over here to the other side and repeat this process, we know that we're going to have another intercept when x is equal to negative 4. So as we're going on with this video, guys, remember your exponent lets you know how many solutions, intercepts you're going to have. Because those are the same things. So we have an exponent of 1. We have one answer, one x-intercept. Exponent of 2. We have two x-intercepts, right? Two solutions, two answers. So when we draw a graph for this, right, we would have an x-intercept. This would probably be negative 4. And then this is going to be our positive 7. So exponent of 2, two intercepts. And before we wrap this video up today, I'm going to go ahead and do one more problem. I'm going to try to squeeze it in a little bit. Matter of fact, no, we're not going to squeeze it in. Let's erase the board so we can have some more space, right? So let's go back and erase all this. And what we're going to do is basically do a function that is to the third power. So now we have f of x, and it's going to be equal to x to the third plus 2x squared minus 15x. So like I was telling you guys earlier, the craziest thing about all of this, guys, is just your foundations. 
So if you remember quadratics, when we're talking about quadratics, we normally want this exponent to start off with a power of 2. So to factor this out, right, we're going to set it equal to 0, just like we did the other two problems. Sorry, that wasn't a plus. It's minus. Minus 15x. So we set this equal to 0, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull a greatest common factor. Remember that GCF? Yeah. So I pull out an x, and now this is going to change to x to the second power plus 2x minus 15, right? And this is equal to 0. So now if you look and just focus on what's inside the parentheses, this is so much more easier to factor compared to the beginning stages, right, when we first started with the problem. So I look at this. We're going to keep x out in front. And when we set up our factors, we are going to get x plus 5, right, x minus 3. When we multiply back, we'll get negative 15 when we multiply. And when we add, we'll get positive 2. So now, what do we do at this step here? We're going to set them all equal to 0. So our first x, x is equal to 0. That's one answer. x plus 5 is equal to 0. And we have x minus 3 is equal to 0. So once we go through and solve, right, we should know that we're going to have 3 different answers because guess what? This was to third power, so we're going to have three solutions, three x-intercepts. So first factor, second factor, and then we go over to our last one and we add three on both sides. So we know we have x is equal to three. So what does this look like on a graph? So now, as we wrap this problem up, let's just erase right here. And understand, guys, anytime you have a graph that looks like this, all right, and let's see. So we have 0, negative 5. So if you have something like this, this is to the third power. So please, guys, understand the difference when we're talking about find the zeros for functions or polynomials, right? And we're talking about linear, which is the first power, quadratic, which is to the second power, or even cubic, which is to the third power. So hopefully this was a very quick and helpful review for you guys in functions and how to find a solution slash roots. I'm Professor Peters. Hope you guys enjoyed your Christmas. Thank you guys so much for joining us today.